Advice to entrepreneurs on starting a business that is a mouthful. Now here, this is kind of sort of going to be a, let's call it a common advice given to new entrepreneurs that's actually wrong. The whole idea here is going to be to debunk some common myths that send entrepreneurial newbies down the wrong paths, falling into death traps, leaving them struggling and really not understanding the rules to the business game. So the name of the game here is to get you on the right track and get you moving as fast as possible. So here it is. Here's advice to entrepreneurs on starting a business. That's actually not right advice. We'll get there. How's it going, my friend? I'm Jeff from 10tononline.com. Listen, if you want to escape the grind, build a fulfilling online business and launch a better tomorrow, then you are definitely in the right spot. All right. Now, before we really get moving to really help you along here, we really need to get you on the right track. I think I mentioned that a second ago. So to help you out here, with your business endeavors. I'm talking about marketing efforts, sales efforts, even things like product development and audience attraction, lead attraction. Well, here's what I've done. I've put together for you a free online business jumpstart guide. This is an easy to follow printable PDF guide. I even made it printable for you. That gives you a solid foundation and blueprint for you and all of the aforementioned components to business. Cause I know it can feel complex and overwhelming. Like, Oftentimes I refer to it as a big soupy tangled mess in your head. The whole idea here is to lay everything out into a set of clear steps for you to follow that give you the insider ingredients to guide you through the clear steps to get you moving. Packed with valuable resources and tools for you. Go and grab your free guide right now while you can over at 10tononline.com forward slash jump. You don't want to miss it. For now though, in the meantime, as I said a moment ago, this is going to be kind of a like blowing out common myths or deconstructing common advice that is given to entrepreneurs, advice that is absolutely dead wrong. Again, what we want to do here is we want to debunk the common myths that send, again, entrepreneurial newbies down the wrong paths and leaving them struggling and really not understanding how things work. They wind up stuck. They wind up trapped very often in businesses they come to despise. We don't want that happening to you. And stick around because I've saved the biggest, nastiest myth for last. Plus, later on, I'll show you where you can go to really get yourself moving on the right track, on the right path into the world of business. First though, how is about you and I, how's about we start with the biggest, most common piece of advice that as a matter of fact, sends most business newbies on an express elevator ride to business hell. And that common piece of advice is to start with an idea first. For whatever reason, us business and entrepreneur types, for whatever reason, we have it in our heads that the first step, the place to start with business is to come up with some kind of idea. This common piece of advice, this common belief is of course where practically everyone who is new to business starts. As a matter of fact, it's safe to say that we all start here. And in order to progress and to develop and to mature as entrepreneurs and business owners, this first big piece of wrong advice is the first business lesson that we need to learn. So what happens is, and I'm sure you can relate to this, what happens is everyone who starts in business believes that they have to start with an idea first. They have to come up with some great idea for a business. And this approach to business comes in two specific forms. Check this out. First, starting out as an employee, because that's practically where all of us begin our business journey, our entrepreneurial journey. Typically, we start in the role of an employee and we get bitten by the business bug. And what happens is people in this situation begin thinking and saying things like this. They say things like, well, I'm the one with all the skill. I'm the one with all the knowledge and the experience. Why should my jerk boss be the one who makes all the money? Why should the business that I work for make all the money? I should go into business for myself. So in other words, someone who is in the role of an employee, they work for someone else's business. They decide, they get bitten by this business bug and they decide that they want to take the task that they perform in their job, whatever that task might be, 
and turn that into a business. Effectively, what they wind up doing is they go into competition with their former boss, and this is very, very common. Now, these types of new entrepreneurs are referred to as technicians. Again, they are taking the technical skill that they performed in their job, whatever that might be. IT support, corporate accounting, maybe graphic design, whatever it is, video editing, and they decide they decide to offer that same skill through a self-employed business. So that's the first very, very common path into business. Maybe you can relate to that. Here's the second very common path into the world of business. The second very common path into the world of business begins with an approach that many, many other people take, which is they come up with what they believe, what they think is an amazing, incredible, never been done before idea for a product, for a service, or for a business. And of course, they are convinced that this amazing, incredible new idea, everyone is gonna wanna buy it, and of course, they believe they're, they're gonna make tons and tons of money. I call these ideas magical, big ideas. I talk about this all the time. So in other words, what I'm getting at here is that seemingly out of the blue, these sorts of folks, they get struck by a bolt of lightning, a flash of inspiration, this idea that they think is gonna sell really, really well. Now, these types of new entrepreneurs, these sorts of folks are referred to as business newbies. So we've got technicians and we've got newbies, the two very, very most common approaches or paths into the world of business. Now, here's the problem with technicians and newbies taking this all too common idea first approach to business. Notice, by the way, that Technicians are taking an idea first approach and so are newbies. They are putting the idea first. By the way, when I say idea first, what I mean is the thing that the business is gonna sell, the product, the service, whatever it is. And here's the problem with an idea first approach to business. The entire emphasis is put on the idea, the thing, again, that the new business is gonna sell. Some new fancy schmancy, idea for a product that's never been done before, like the pet rock or the hula hoop or something like that. Or again, like a video editor who decides to go out on their own or a corporate accountant who decides to strike out on their own. Now, here's what happens to both technicians and to newbies. Very, very quickly, both newbies and technicians come to realize that there is a whole heck of a lot more to business than the product or the service that the business sells. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, but the thing that a particular business sells is the least important aspect of the business. If you're not sure on that one, we'll talk more about that shortly. In the meantime, that is the first very common piece of business advice that we're debunking here, idea first. Again, stick with me, we'll talk more about that. Here's another very common piece of business advice that we've gotta debunk. As a matter of fact, this one is so common, so pervasive that many new entrepreneurs and business owners automatically follow it unquestioningly. They don't even think about it. And that is to act in the role of an entrepreneur or as a business owner in a quote unquote professional business way, whatever that might be. Now, don't get me wrong here. Of course, you wanna treat your business seriously and handle your customers professionally. Instead though, what I'm talking about is maybe more things like your branding, your marketing, and your messaging and your communications. Practically all business marketing and messaging is boring, it's stale, it is run of the mill, it is uninteresting. And in the sea of endless sameness, in the endless sea of beige, more beige, more of the same simply does not stand out. My friend, it's important to understand that a key component of your marketing is to stand out and to get the attention of the exact sorts of people who you want to work with and serve and attract into your business. Yet, if your messaging is boring, if it's generic, and if it's in the same tone as everyone else's, then you're not gonna be standing out. Beige and boring, means a slow, painful death. In fact, you could say that a cardinal rule in business is boring is the death of the sale. Instead, what you wanna do is you wanna put some personality, some interest into your business and have some fun. 
be your genuine true self and inject that into your communications and into your messaging and into your marketing. That's because your market and your sales leads are attracted to things that are different, things that are interesting, things that are even entertaining and fun. Who wants to sit through a boring, plain, uninspiring marketing message? Only people who reside in corporate boardrooms. As a matter of fact, another cardinal rule of business is this. Your market, your audience, the group of like-minded people who you serve through your business will not tolerate being bored, especially in this day and age when it's so easy for them to click away onto something else that is much more interesting. So with your marketing, don't act in like a stuffy corporate, again, quote unquote, business professional way. Again, what so many new entrepreneurs do, I think really what's happening here is they are emulating what they think or how they think a, a business owner or an entrepreneur should act. And it is lame. You got to be different. Understand that customers aren't necessarily buying your product. Instead, they're buying into you, into your brand, and into your messaging, and what those things mean. All right, now, there is one final piece of business advice that you and I, we've got to debunk here, and this one is a real doozy, and it ties into what we've touched on earlier, this concept of magical big ideas. First, though, if you are seeking to take the business leap and build your own business, and you're wanting the steps to start and to grow your own business, then here's what to do next. Get your browser pointed over to 10tononline.com forward slash free. Now, there you'll find a free online business workshop. This is a totally self-paced online workshop. There, what you will get is a proven roadmap that shows you what steps to take to make your ideas happen so that you can move forward with clarity and certainty. Your free workshop is going to help you to understand the business ropes, the fundamentals, the basics of business, even if you have little or even no business experience. You'll find out how to minimize your business risk and maximize your results, whether you already have an exciting and great idea for a business, or even if you're not sure what business to start and are not sure what products are going to sell well for you. Definitely bring a notepad. This free workshop is packed with info that you're not going to find anywhere else. You'll want to take detailed notes as we go. You don't want to miss it. Next though, here is the last common piece of business advice that you and I, we've got to completely dissolve, disassemble, debunk. As I say, this one's nasty. This one's a doozy. Earlier on, you and I, we talked about magical big ideas and the idea first approach to business, right? Well, an alternative piece of advice, very common advice, is to find a need and fill it. Have you heard that before? Find a need in the market and fill it. Now, this is much, much better advice than to, as we touched on earlier, dream up some amazing, incredible, unproven, untested idea as business newbies do. We talked about that, getting struck by inspiration, right? And it's way, way better than taking a technical skill that was perhaps previously performed in a job and trying to convert that into a business as we learned technicians do. But that said, we can actually go much, much deeper beyond this common piece of advice, which again is find a need and fill it. I'll tell you a while ago in a marketing book, I can't remember which one and I can't remember the author, but the author asked his live audience, if he were to open a hot dog stand, what is the most important thing that he would need? Now, I'm probably going to butcher this story a little bit because I'm going from memory, but people in the audience were yelling out things like a great quality hot dog and, you know, the common things that you would think of, a great prime location. And the guy on the stage, the author said, while those things are important, most crucially, what I need for my, if I were to open up a hot dog stand is a long, long line of hungry, eager, motivated buyers. So where I'm going with this is rather than simply uncovering a need and filling it, instead, find a burning, hungry desire in the market and fill that. In other words, you don't want to simply uncover a need. What you want to do is you want to uncover an extremely painful, urgent, like hair on fire desire, and then fill that. That, my friend, is the key to attracting highly motivated, red hot, and eager buyers into your business. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this debunking of advice that is given to entrepreneurs and new business owners when they're getting started. Now, next, let's put the right plan of action into place for you. It all starts over in your online business workshop over at 10tononline.com forward slash free. Bring that notepad, bring a coffee. What the heck? I'll see you there next.